I'll copy this just to save some time. And then I think there are a lot of changes that will be required in this test case. So display using multi size it. Using multiple threads. Multiple threads, I will just use two, two threads. Should be good enough to demonstrate this. So I said first create a, a, a latch, countdown latch. So that our threads are run completely before they finish this test case. Okay, so I created a countdown latch of two because I'm going to use two threads. Now let's me let me create a first thread. Final thread. I will sorry. Thread. Say thread one is new thread. Okay. And inside this only we will uh, define the renewable using the lambda expression here. me okay and inside this i will this thread would be pushing these first items here so a b c d now let's try to hit the capacity that's what we discussed here that if uh, there was a single thread and we try to uh, insert more elements than five then that thread would be blocked uh, until anything is popped out from it so let's try to mimic that scenario here because we are going to have two threads now E and F. Okay, and once this thread is done, then we will call this latch dot countdown. Okay, so this is done. So latch, I will explain later that what's going on. So let's create our second thread first. So before uh, once this th thread is created, we will call thread one dot start, where it will ex exactly execute this. Okay. Uh, and this and uh, okay. Now let's me create another thread. I will create a similar thing here. Thread two. Sorry. Thread two uh, and okay. And now I will do is that I will just call one pop. That's it. And I will do last dot countdown. Okay. So what will happen is that when this thread is trying to like push A, B, C, D, E, up till this, E would be pushed. And now for F, it would be blocked. Okay. So it will not proceed further and not call this last dot countdown. So this thread would be, thread one would be blocked at this point. At this point. After this, we have got this thread two. This thread two will will also run independently of this thread one, and this thread two will pop this element because uh, for the pop we already see that it's not empty; it's already filled full with the capacity. So it will go and pop this element. So this element would be popped, okay, as per theory. And after this element is popped out, so this thread will proceed further. It will push that element in F at the top, and then it will call the last dot countdown. So at the end, it, we will be having a state as the top is pointing to F and we will be having elements at A, B, C, D. So A, B, C, D and F, F at the top. Okay. So this is what it should be at this point when we have this thread two dot start. And then we have to await for the, for the last to complete. Okay. So, okay. It will throw interpreter exception. So I will just add it here. Okay. Let's uh, let's revise what we have done. So we created a latch for coordinating that we have to wait for these threads to complete. We could also use the join before, but uh, I think countdown latch is like is better to, to use here. So we got a countdown latch of two, and we got this first thread. So in the third, the first thread is trying to push five elements first, and at this point, because it has already hit the capacity of five. So this thread, thread one would be blocked at this point because it will, it will be waiting for any thread to like uh, like to pop first before it can insert this. So at this point, uh, this would be at E. So our stack would be looking like this. A, B, C, D is there and top is here. And for uh, pushing this F element, it's it has to wait. That thread has to wait because it all, it's already at the capacity level. 
ओके सो एज मैं शेड यर पुश इट विल वेट हेयर दिस थेड टू इंसर्ट एफ ओके सो लेट्स गो बैक ओके सो एट दिस दिस थेड इज ब्लॉक हेयर नाउ वी हैव टू वेट फॉर दिस थेड टू नाउ थेड टू विल आल्सो स्टार्ट इट टू स्टार्ट रनिंग दिस एंड इट विल सी दैट दैट थेड इज ऑलरेडी it is it is not empty so it will not await anything here it will immediately return this element as tagged pop so at this point what will happen is uh the element at the top would be popped so it will return actually e here it will pop e element okay um so in the di di diagram if we go back here so this would be popped okay so this would be removed here control c i will just take it out and this slot is empty now and the top has been moved to here okay so this is the state now and now the the thread which was waiting the thread one was waiting to insert this pushed f element right now it can proceed further and it will push this element and this thread to uh, if it will immediately uh, do the countdown it means that the latch has been uh, a bit uh, like for one it has been already reduced and uh, now the third one will proceed and it will push f element here so what it will look like is that it will be f here it will be moved from here and then top will pointing here okay so this would be happening at after this two threads complete they call that count down methods and then the, the latch has been awaiting here because it has to like count down two times to uh, to move uh, to move to the next next line next state now this latch await at this part of this point we are we ensured that uh, the thread one and thread two has run already and after this our stack would be looking like this a b c d f e already popped out before by thread two now let's change our assert statement here because our stack would be looking like this so the top element would be f then so i'll change it to f and f here my stack dot pop and uh, let's remove all this to y and then i will pushing another element g here because we have already popped uh, f it means that now capacity is 4 again and there is a space for one more element that's why we push g here and then we again we can just do simple uh, that the stack dot pop should be g and after that if we again peek so is all gone now so the last element would be d element okay so this is all the test about let's uh, confirm that this is our understanding is correct so what i will do is i will uh, put a debug statement here let's debug this now i will debug this here so at this point we ensure that we'll see that it should be exactly same as what we expect here i go to my stack here i see that a b c d f so it's exactly same as what we have discussed here it's a b c d f at this point okay so our assumption was correct so i'll just resume it and then the thread should pass the test the test case has already passed okay so this is how we actually uh, we created that two threads let's revise it again one one more time uh, that the thread one was blocked here for uh, push f because uh, it was already hitting the capacity then thread two came and it actually popped the element and then it count down i mean it's just completed now and it means that the e element was popped out at the top that's why the thread one can proceed further it will get the signal uh, signal method that uh, not can proceed so it will push the top f element and uh, once it's completed the both threads complete at this point we will be having a stack like this a b c d f and e already popped out by thread 2 after this we again just two basic assertions that f is at the peak and pop and then uh, we try to insert one more element just to ensure that everything is good and correct so guys this was all about uh follow up to implement a bounded complex tag in java using logs so we implemented uh, using the conditions in the logs in the next video we'll cover the follow up 3 which is implement a concurrent stack in java using sas operation which is sas is compare and swap operation and this is uh, atomic classes in java api which is being used so see you all in the next video